Good morning. Give God praise. Good morning. For his name is worthy to be praised. Yes. Kingdom yes. praise ministries. Let's make some noise for the Lord. Amen. Ooh. Amen. We thank God today for being able to come into your homes, your living rooms, your bedrooms. Some of y'all have some of y'all at bed at bedside Baptist this morning. <laughs> but it's all right. Just wave your hand right where you are. Yes. Say, I'm in the house. Amen. 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 I come to worship. I come to give God praise. We thank God for you being with us once again by way of social media as we seek to give, give God virtual, virtual worship. Amen. 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 Virtual worship because God is worthy of the praise. Amen. Amen. Thank God for another opportunity just to share with you as we seek to exercise the gifts and callings that God has placed in our lives. For his glory and his honor. That's all we're trying to do is lift up the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness? Amen. All we're trying to do is lift up the name of Jesus yes, the Lord. best way we can for his glory and honor. So we thank God today for another day. We thank you for being with us. We also want to mention to you that we will be starting up our Bible classes in September on Friday nights. We're going to have an hour of power on Friday nights. An hour of Bible study instruction will be coming again. And also on the page, you can look on the bottom page, you can see... I would dress. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you can give by um, our cash app is there. You can mail in your funds. We thank God because I don't care what you say. It takes money to do ministry. We plan on going forth for, for the name of the Lord and for his glory. And we also want to thank you for being with us. Yes. We're so grateful to God that our, our Facebook page and followers are increasing. We thank God for the YouTube exposure and we're seeking to build it up for God's kingdom. We want to get the word out. That's our yes. job. Yes. We may be in a pandemic right now, but the word of God is still saving. The word of God is still healing. The word of God is still doing a mighty work. We want to get the word out. We got good news, y'all. Yes. We got good news in the mix of confusion. We got good news. Our Lord still reigns. Yes. You may tell her, can tell her I'm excited. I am excited. I'm excited about Jesus. Amen. You always got to keep your own fire. So we thank God today as we're going to have a word of prayer. And we're going to have my um, daughter, uh, minister in training to come. She's going to bring forth a selection, and then we'll get into God's words. Let's pray. Father, I bless you today because you are such a wonderful God. My heart is singing. My spirit is rejoicing in the God of my salvation. Yes. I just want to give you praise today, God, for being such a wonderful Savior. You have kept us all week. You've kept us all through the night. You watched over us, giving us health and strength. We don't want to take that for granted. As a matter of fact, the very breath that we breathe has come from you. Yes. And we want to use the time you've given us on this side to bring you glory and honor. So, Father, be with us today as we seek to lift up the name of Jesus. And somebody in the listening audience, somebody will hear the voice, will hear your voice speaking, and their lives will be changed forever. So I ask you, God, to let the rain fall, Lord. Let some rain fall on us right now. Let your spirit move even through the highways and the byways. Let your spirit move. Let your rain fall. Let somebody's life be touched and changed because of the word of God this day. I not only pray for this ministry, but I pray for the multitude of ministries that are going out virtually. Even some people are still meet, are meeting in their uh, church homes. Some people are meeting outside, outside of their church. And I pray for every ministry. Everyone who has been planted by your hand, I yes. pray that the ministry will go forth effectively and that your ministry will minister God all over this world, that souls will be saved and the saints will be strengthened. We ask it in Jesus' name. Now yes. heal somebody. Yes. Deliver yes. somebody, oh God, in the name of Jesus and help us to, as we go forth in this ministry, that you will guide every step and that you will let it grow as you see fit. And for yes. this, we give you praise. We give you praise in advance for what you shall do shall do through our lives. So we give ourselves to you today. We thank you for your blessings and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen and amen. amen. Let's worship. Amen. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope it's not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Ooh, 
everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Yes, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Cause it's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees crying out to Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Cause it's me, oh Lord. I'm on Give me you, everything else must wait. Give me you, I just hope I'm not too late. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. God is Amen. good. Amen. I thank God today. My heart rejoices. Every father takes delight in seeing their child do things. And I guess I'm partial this morning, but I just watched my daughter grow in her ministry. Um, when we first started out at the house, um, she was in the corner singing. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she said, I'll sing, Dad, but I want to sit back here in the back. And I gave her a couple weeks to do that. I said, now you got to go front, take another step. And then she went up front to start singing. And then we had to go virtual. I asked her to bring the selection, and she started singing. She did real well. But every week, I just see her getting stronger in her ministry. Every her voice is strong. I get so many. We get so we get more. Um, <laughs> we get more compliments about the singing than we do preaching. That's all right, as long as the light is shining. Amen. Amen. Give God the glory. But we thank God for her. acapella is difficult to do. But every week she excels. Every week she gets stronger. And I want to encourage her. Amen. Amen. To go forth for. It has not yet been seen what the Lord is going to do through her life. And I yes. trust this for each one of my family members. We're very close. Most of you know that we're very close. My son and I talk a lot. We spend a lot of time together. And our talking is centered, is oftentimes centered around Christ. Amen. And you got to have Christ in the crisis. Yes. yes. You got to yes. have him when the crisis is over. Amen. 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 I need him every day and every hour. So we often talk. My wife and I. We spend time praying and talking about the ministry. What can we do to further it? How can we become better people? So we're all in this together. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I pray that each one of you that support us each week, that you're with us, as we seek to just lift up the name of Jesus. I'm not going to uh, drag this on more than necessary. So let's go on into the word of God. 2 Corinthians 3. 2 Corinthians 3. Two verses. Verses 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3. Verses 17 and 18. All right. Now the Lord is that spirit. 
And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Somebody say from glory to glory. Glory to glory. glory to glory. I thank God he's still working on us. Amen. Amen. Now let's watch up today and it's on my shirt under construction. How many know you're under construction? Yes. Amen. And don't yes. you know that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So yes. the God who started the work, ain't that good news? Yes. The God who started the work in you will complete that work. So um, I was thinking this morning, reflecting on what I should share this morning. And as I was reflecting, God took my mind back to um, uh, uh, about two years ago, my sister and I were um, closing on selling my dad's house. And we were going off a of falls road. We didn't know where we were going. We had the GPS on. And we noticed going up the road, you had to go up the little narrow road with the falls road narrows that we had to make a, a sharp left when you, you pass the place. But off the sharp left, there was this building that it, it, I think it used to be a brewery or something like that. And it was building looked a little dingy outside. And we said, okay, we'll go in. But we were surprised to know we got in that building, how beautiful it was. They had gone inside that building and made it, it was just, everything was pristine. Everything was, the colors were crisp and bright. It was just beautiful inside the building. So when I came out of the building, I know the outside didn't look so bad because the inside was so beautiful. The outside looked differently now because I saw what was on the inside. And I began to think this morning, what must go into uh, constructing a building? Now, this, what's getting popular now in, in our day is that people aren't, so much building, they are refurbishing houses. They're going in to uh, prior construction, constructed buildings that are strong and firm, and they're going in and gutting them out and bringing new things in there and really doing wonders with existing buildings. And I begin to think about what a process this might be to go into a building that was used for one thing. And inside there's old dust and dirt and it hasn't been used for years. What it must be to go in and start planning how you need your architecture, and you need your designers, you need those who draw the blueprints. You need a lot of work to go in to do that work. And those that build the work aren't the ones who make the plans, they're the ones who carry out the plans. And I begin to think about our lives. How that we are as, even as a child of God, we're under construction. Mm -hmm. And I begin to think about the fact that in order for us to be the way the designer has planned for us to be, he has to move some stuff around. He has to take some things out. He has to uh, destroy some things. He has to take out the old and bring in the new. And then I begin to think about uh, what God wants to do in our lives. God wants to remind us, if you are a child of God, if you ought to be under construction. And this construction begins at the moment you believe, but it won't be complete until you see his face. Yeah. So all of us ought to be under construction. Yeah. And I begin to think all this week about uh, coming in the place, Tony Evans, Dr. Tony Evans is doing a series on knowing God, and it's been really feeding my spirit. I was thinking about coming to a place where we can really know God. And I say, well, you, you say I've been serving God all my life, man, I usher, been this, a preacher, whatever. But you know, you can have all the trappings of knowing God. You can have the form of godliness, but not really know him. Mm. A few weeks ago, this the sermon I preached still disturbs me when the folk got before the Lord uh, and said to him that have not we done these many wonderful things? We've prophesied. We've, we've done these great works, mighty works in your name. We've done all these things. And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. I, I was never in a real relationship with you. You had all the, tra the trappings and the outward look. You had all the cosmetics. You had all you need on the outside. But I really never knew you. We were never in a relationship. And that thing disturbed me because these people thought they were right. Down to the end, they thought they were right. And it's been disturbing me because I don't want to live this life and not really be God's child. Mm. I don't want to live the life I think is a Christian life and not really be God's child. And that disturbed me to the place. I'm in this thing now. I want, I want to know God. You say, well, I, I met him. How many know you meet somebody that doesn't mean you know him? Mm -hmm. I met him when I said, Lord, come into my life as a child. And how many know we don't even know ourselves? Yeah. How many of you have said things you thought you'd never say? Mm -hmm. Did things you thought you'd never do? You say, oh, that's not even like me. So we find things about ourselves. We've been married over 30 years, my wife and I. We still don't really know each other because we don't really know us. 
So I'm still getting to know me. I'm still getting to know her. And if we are so complex that we don't even know ourselves, what do you think about the God who made us? The God who made us, it's not just an introduction. Many of us, we would be, uh, we would be uh, disturbed if we would go to a restaurant and get the menu and read about all the things that are there and get up and leave out. It would, it would be odd to get there and have to read the menu and never get what you came for. Many of us have a menu religion. Mm. We read the Bible. We read about God. We read about the things he's done. We, we talk to each other about it. We even shout about it. But we treat God as an idea and not as a person. Mm. We treat God as a force, but not as a person. I mean, the God we serve, when I read about him talking to Moses face to face, that's the same God. In the God we serve, he didn't stop talking. He is still speaking. He's speaking to us through his word. He's speaking to us in our hearts. He's giving us that direction. And when I look through the Bible, I used to even look at the Old Testament and thought there was another, that God seemed so much more severe there. But when we really read between the lines, you'll find out God has always been in relation with God. He's always been a God who wanted to talk to his people and relate to his people. He's always been a God who's been merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenty of mercy. He will not always chide, now that he keeps his anger forever. Aren't you glad to serve a God like that? Yes. So I look at the Bible, I don't see two different gods. I see the same God, but now he's working through us through much more mercy and grace. He's working to us now, even in the world we live in, through much more mercy and grace because God has reconciled the world to himself through Jesus Christ. The world may not know it or receive it, but guess what? God has still done the work. Amen. Amen. You can't make somebody take what you give them. Mm -hmm. All you can do is offer it to them. Right. Yeah. Salvation is effectual. Salvation is sure. Salvation is real, but you can't make anybody take it. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't make you take it. Yeah. If I hand you $100, you can say I don't want it. But guess what? That person that takes that $100 is going to benefit from being a little bit richer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God gives us our pays for salvation and says to you, all you have to do is take it. If I don't take it, that's not on him. That's on me. Yeah. I can walk away. I can turn my back. But guess what? That's not on him. That's on me. He offers salvation to you and I. So I was thinking about knowing God in a real way. We have a superficial. You know, you know, you can go to church, sing hymns. Go to church every Sunday. You can be a preacher, a teacher, or whatever you may be. You can still do all these things and not really know God. Mm. Because knowing God is ongoing. Moses had that bread in, in Exodus 33 and 34. He asked God, he said, God, I just want to know you. What you mean, Moses? He said, I want to know your ways. So I know I got your favor on my life. You mean Moses, the one who led the Israelites out of, uh, of Egypt, the one who God spoke to through the bush that burned and what was sued, the one who God used to bring uh, the Israelites out? Moses wasn't satisfied with knowing God's acts. He wanted to know God's ways. Yes. You can see the hand of God working in your life. You know what he can do. You got your hand. You got your eyes on his hand. We serve today a Christianity is always looking at the hand of God. What can he give me? What can I get out of this? But the God we serve, he only does for us, not because so we can watch his hand, he does for us so we can see his heart. Yes, amen. And sometimes we miss his heart by looking at his hand. We don't appreciate what he's already done for us. How many know that God has already done enough for you? Yes. yes. If he never does another thing, if he never sends another blessing, how many of you know, listen to me, God has already done enough. Give God a praise right now. Amen. God has already saved me. God has already kept me. God has already worked miracles. God has always, already made a way of salvation. He's already done enough. But we keep our eyes on his hand. But God wants to know he's seeking worshipers. John 4 tells us he's seeking those who will worship him in spirit and truth. He's seeking someone who will want to get to know him. He won't force himself on you. Moses went up on the mountain and stayed there 40 days, 40 nights, did not eat. And when he came out, something of God rubbed off on him. Hallelujah. Amen. When he came out, he didn't come out looking the same. Mm -hmm. His face shone to the place People didn't want Moses to show up anymore. Moses, your face is scaring me. Light was shooting out of Moses' face. Because Moses had spent time with God. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. The story has been told. 
uh, of a, a, um, a soldier or who wanted to rescue a damsel. Remember back in the day, the damsel stories, he wanted to rescue a dam damsel out of the tower she had been placed in by an enemy. And he saw the tower, he estimated what it would take him to get there. He, he enlisted a couple of his friends to send a message to her. He sent to her a caterpillar. And the caterpillar was always known to complain. This caterpillar complained about everything. Caterpillar said, I'll go, but I really don't want to go. And I'll tell her, I'll give her the message. He said, this, this is what I want you to tell her. Tell her, I'm coming to get her at 5 p.m. I want her to be ready. So the caterpillar goes up and start raining. Ah, oh, here we go, rain. He goes up. He crawls up the tower. He goes in. He sees the damsel. He says, is this what he sent me here for? He looks at her. Is this what he really sent me here for? He looks at her and says, hey, lady, you don't look like much to me, but Prince Charmer here is coming to get you if I, he want me to let you know. And she looks and she's just, and he, and he looks back at her and says, mm. shakes his head. He goes back down the wall. But he enlists, the, he enlists also a butterfly. He was friends of butterfly. He does a butterfly tell her, I'm coming to get her fire. The butterfly flies and he goes and the rain hits him. He goes to the rain. He goes to the, the height of the, of the castle to go up to get her out of the room. He goes through there. And when he gets there, bird almost grabs him and snatches him. But he comes in. He says, damsel, Prince Charming, he's coming to rescue you. So be ready at fire. And she says, she says, um, why does your message make me feel so much better than the other message? He sent another, he sent the, he sent the caterpillar to tell me the same message, but when he left, I didn't feel any better. But when you come, I feel better. I feel like I'll be rescued. He said, oh, him, don't mind him anymore. And I don't mind him. You know why? He said, I used to be like that before I was transformed. Amen. Amen. Oh, some of y'all got it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when Christ, when you're in relationship with Christ, some of y'all won't get that till later on, but I want you to think about it. Mm. <laughs> When you are in, in communication with Christ, one of the proofs that you are walking with God is that you're being changed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let y'all sit on that for a minute. Mm -hmm. One of the proofs that you're walking with God is that you're being transformed. The fruit they bear. In our scripture today, Verse 17, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. You probably thought I forgot about the word of the priest. No, it's all around this word. Now the, Paul says this. Now the Lord is the spirit. He gives a co the context of this passage. He's talking about Moses hiding his face in the old covenant. But now in the new covenant, the veil of hiding has been removed. So he's saying to, uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He's saying, now the Lord is that spirit. And here we see the deity of the spirit of God. The Lord is that spirit. We have the God, the Father, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. The Lord is that spirit. He is Lord. The, the spirit of God is Lord. You can take time out to call on the spirit of God to help you. How many have done the spirit of God? How many of I need the spirit of God? Mm -hmm. I need the spirit of God, especially when things happen to me on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. When you deal with people on a daily basis, you need the spirit of God. Yeah. You need the spirit of God to go to Walmart, Kmart. Not Kmart's gone. Walmart and <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> You need the Spirit of God to go with you when you're going to work. You need the Spirit of God to go with you and be in control of your life when you're driving on the street. Because so many dangers on the street. Mm -hmm. We need the Spirit of God. You need the Spirit of God in your house. You're going to fall in your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Around your house. We need the Spirit of God. He said the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. yes. You know what liberty means? That means freedom. Amen. Amen. And I thank God today that when you're saved, God's spirit comes in to live within each one of your hearts. Amen. You don't have to wait on him or tarry for him or cry for him. He comes in. Mm -hmm. He comes in to live in you. How many are glad you got God's spirit? Amen. Amen. And he said he would never leave out of you. Once he came in, he would never leave you. God's spirit is in each one of his children. And God's spirit being in each one of his children does not mean because he's there, he actually has control. Mm. Some of us have his spirit, but we in control. Mm. Some of us have his spirit, but we ignore the spirit when he begins to lead our lives. Because the spirit of God always cuts across our what we want to do, what our flesh wants to do, and tells us to do what's right. Yeah. God is looking for some people where Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. 
Oh God. God wants us to walk so close with him that we know what he wants us to do in every given situation. And some of the things we're struggling with. We struggle because we haven't taken advantage of what God has told us to do. This spirit of God who was in us here says that the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When God's spirit is in you, that means you are free. Amen. Amen. Not free to do what you want to do, but free to be to do all that God has called you to do. Yes. And the reason why we struggle with things is because we spend our time trying to fix ourselves. We spend all of our time trying to get ourselves together. But I got some news for you today. You didn't save you. You can't keep you. And you can't fix you. Amen. Amen. When they do construction on these old buildings, they don't do go in the building and do whatever they want to do. They go according to the plan. Amen. The Spirit of God living in you, He's going according to the plan. But what God has called us to do, as we read this verse, verse 18 says, But we all, all of us that are saved, Paul's talking to. And he says, We all, because in this context, I want you to read this whole chapter. In the context, only Moses could go to the mountain and spend time with God. God says, when you come up here to me, I don't want you to let no animals, no bodies to come with you. I want you to come alone. Mm -hmm. So Moses went up to God's presence to get a rewrite of the Ten Commandments. Because the people sinned so bad when Moses came down the mountain, he broke them. They then they worshiped the idol gods. Mm -hmm. Before Moses gets back the first time, he goes back up. God says, I'm going to do it again. Aren't you glad that you serve a God who will do it again? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Moses comes down. He was the only one able to go there. And even in the Old Testament, under the Aaronic priesthood, the priest was only allowed to go into the Holy of Holies once a year. And the Holy of Holies was divided by a curtain that you couldn't go in. But once a year, you had, and Aaron had to use blood for himself and for the people. Only once a year. And Aaron had to have bells on the bottom of his uh, robes so the people outside could hear the bells and knew Aaron was still alive. Mm -hmm. And they tell me tradition, traditionally that they would tie a rope around the priest's leg just in case. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you couldn't go in and get him. He got taken out because he wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So the priest, the bells stopped jingling. They knew the priest wasn't moving. They pulled him out. That's how God's holiness is. You can't come... In your own self before God. You got to come the way God prescribes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You got to come the way God says to come. And guess what? If you want to go back to the Old Testament and do all those things, go ahead. But those things were types and shadow of Christ who was to come. And Christ satisfied the just demands of a holy God Amen. on our behalf. That's the good news. Amen. 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 The price. But it says we all with an open face. We don't have the veil on our face anymore. They can do. Moses had to come out and veil his face. Because the people couldn't take the fact he was in God's presence. Mm -hmm. But God is saying now, each one of us can go, oh, Lord, I can't even say it. Lord, I know I can't say it like one I need to be said. I admit right now that I don't have the power, so please help me, Holy Spirit, to say it like it needs to be said. Amen. 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 Because now we can go into the very presence of God ourselves without our faces being covered. Yes. God has removed the veil. So we have the opportunity to go into God's presence ourselves, we're beholding as in a mirror or a glass. You know what a mirror does, what a glass does? It gives reflection. Mm -hmm. When you come to God's word, it's like coming to the mirror. Remember the old fairy tale, mirror, mirror of the wall, who's the fairest of them all? When you go, the thing about a mirror is, a mirror doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. What the mirror shows is not you, it's your reflection. Amen. 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 So you look into the word of God, it's going to show you you know, I don't want to do one of those numbers like uh, look in the mirror and see my neighbor. <laughs> I don't want to look in the mirror and see my rear view. I need to look in the mirror and look, look at what I look like. Mm -hmm. So the mirror of God's word is going to show us where we are and how we are. Mm -hmm. But yet the mirror doesn't tell us that we can fix ourselves. Mm -hmm. But this mirror is not only reflective, it's also transforming. He says, as we behold, that means you got to spend time. I hope you follow me. You got to spend time in God's word. Yes. 
You have to read the menu. But you also have to stay in his presence. You have to stay in an open relationship with God. Now, now y'all don't think when I say open relationship, I'm not talking about what the world says open relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a relationship where your face is no longer covered. You've taken off. The veil's been removed. You're coming to God just like you are. Let, coming to God's word, showing you who you are, showing you what you're about, and you're not standing there saying, Lord, it's not me, or Lord, it's my neighbor. You say, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. And what happens there? The verse tells us we all are with open face, Beholding as in a glass the glory of God. What are we seeing in the word of God? We see the glory of God. What's the glory of God? All that he is. <laughs> Moses didn't only ask God, show me your ways. Moses went a step further. Moses said, show me your glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And how many of you go into God's presence in your time alone with God and ask God, Lord, just show me who you are. Because once we see him, guess what? He will begin to transform our lives. Amen. Oh, Lord. Nobody had to drag you to church. Uh -huh. Nobody had to drag you to Bible study. Nobody had to put a leash around your neck to pull you in. Because when you have a relationship with God, you are there because you love to be there. You serve because you, you love to serve. It's not a job or it's a duty. It's a pleasure. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. God doesn't want grudging givers. Uh -uh. God wants joyful givers. Who don't give to get, but give because you know you're blessed. Amen. I wonder if God's got any joyful givers out there. Amen. I'm not giving to get because God, I'm already got. <laughs> already got the blessings. Already got the mercies. But I'm giving because I love you. I'm serving because I love you. God is seeking worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. You not only need fire, you need light. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Some people got fire. The Israelites had fire. Those who stood before Jesus, who said, Lord, Lord, haven't we? They had fire, but they didn't have light. Mm -hmm. You got to have fire, but you also got to have God's truth. Yes. Yes. Amen. And you come to God. Moses said, show me your glory. God, what Moses was saying, Lord, I want to see who you are. And guess what happens? This, this, this verse tells us. But we all with the open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of God, what's going to happen to us? We're going to be changed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We trying to change ourselves. We trying to fix ourselves. We're making resolutions. We're saying I'm not going to cuss anymore, but sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> we say I'm not going to womanize anymore. I'm not going to deal with pornography anymore. And we're trying to fight these vices in our lives. We're trying to fight and fight. But the more we fight, the deeper we sink. Mm. You can't change you. But as you're in God's presence, he says here, as you behold his glory, as you come to know him, just as sure as you know your husband, your wife, your closest friend, when you come to know him, we need to talk to him face to face like Moses did. Yes. Those things will fall off your life. Oh, hallelujah. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Mm -hmm. God has given me freedom to do what I couldn't do myself. He said to uh, Zephaniah, to Zechariah, he said to Zechariah when they're trying to build the temple, he said, speak to this room and let him know that's not by power. No, it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? God said, I'm going to make you a plain. No matter how big your mountain is, God is saying, I'm your might. I'm your power. I am the one that gives you power to do these things. So you know what's going to happen? When you change you, you take the glory. And guess what? It doesn't last long. But when God changes you, guess who gets the glory? Hallelujah. Amen. God gets not some of the glory, but all the oh, glory. Lord. So I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, if you're struggling with something, and we all have our struggles, mm -hmm. stop trying to change your behavior. Because what happened was is that that building I talked to you about earlier, that building didn't look like much on the outside, but it had been uh, changed on the inside. And then because I came out and saw the change on the inside, the outside looked better. I want to let you know when God does a change on you on the inside, it will be one of liberty. Yes. God is able to set you free. Yes. You don't have to wait on your deliverance. Your deliverance took place on Calvary. Yes. How many guys? Can I get a witness in? Amen. My deliverance took place on Calvary, and all God wants me to do is walk in it. Yes. But it didn't say it all happens at one time. I want y'all to get afraid. It says we'll be changed 
into the same image. That means that as I spend time in God's presence, he's going to change me into the same image. He's going to change me to look like him. But he says this from glory to glory. Yeah. You know what that means? It's a process. Yes. I'm under construction. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a process. God is working on me little by little from glory to glory. How many of you are stuck between the glories today? Yes. yes. I'm stuck in between the glories. And one day when I see him, I'm going to be like him if I'll see him as he is. Yes. But right now, I thank God for the change. Yes. I thank God for the change. It's a gradual change, but it is a change. Thank yeah. you for the process. Thank God for the process. It's a gradual thing, but I thank God I'm in the process. Yeah. I'm not where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used, used to be. To be. Can Amen. I get a witness? Amen. He brought me from a long way. This building might not look like much, but inside, the Lord has been working. Yeah. Amen. The building might be looking old. Look like it may have had some use in the past, but God is saying, I'm going to do a new thing in you. Yeah. I'm going to take the thing that people said that was nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever treated you like nothing? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever dismissed you like nothing? Yes. Mm -hmm. But guess what? God said, I still got work for you to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul Amen. says there's a treasure in an earthen vessel. Yes. And he's that treasure. Amen. 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 Paul says this, the outward man is perishing. Yeah. He's getting older day by day. You can color him. <laughs> you can make up him. You can... Go to the gym and work out on him. <laughs> but one thing you can't do is beat age. Mm -hmm. The outward man is perishing. When I thought when I was born, I was heading to the grave. Mm -hmm. Sure as you're born, sure as you shall die. The outward man is perishing. But the inward man. Hallelujah. Yes, I hope y'all feel me with that. If I had some music behind me right now, I said, dun -dun. <laughs> <laughs> the inward man, dun -dun. <laughs> it's being renewed. <laughs> <laughs> day by day. Yes. I'm so yes, glad yes, that the God I serve is working on me. Yes. I'm not what I want to be, but I thank God. I see him changing me from day to day. Yes. If that's not your testimony, you need to spend time in God's presence. If you're struggling with something like we all do, you need to spend time in God's presence. He's waiting on you. You know how I know? Because James says it. James says, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. God is waiting on you. Yes. Can you imagine the God of heaven and earth? He's waiting on you and he's waiting on me. He wants to enter into a real relationship. He says, you read about me in the menu. Mm -hmm. I even brought some waiters to bring the food out to you. But you'll never be satisfied until you taste and see. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The menu is his Bible. Mm -hmm. The servants, his waiters are those who carry the word of God. All we can do is bring the food out to you, but you got to taste and see. Yes. You got to eat for yourself. Don't be satisfied with the menu and go home hungry. Hungry. Don't be satisfied with the waiter who brings the food out to you. Don't be satisfied until you know God for yourself. Amen. Maybe you're Amen. satisfied. I'm not satisfied with where I am. That's why I'm working to let the Spirit of God change me by being in God's presence, asking God, show me who you are. Help me to see you in my circumstance. Help me not to be a complainer like that snail that, that uh, caterpillar was. Mm -hmm. Help me be like the butterfly and say I used to be like him until I underwent a transformation. Yes. How many yes. glad there's a wonderful change yes. has come over my life. So don't tell me you know God and you're not being changed. Because you don't know him like you ought to know him. Mm -hmm. Because when God comes in your life, he takes over your life. Yes. He makes you something you would never before. Don't be satisfied until you look like Jesus. Don't be satisfied until you talk like Jesus. Don't be satisfied until you live like Jesus. Don't be satisfied until you're face to face. Amen. Amen. I'm under construction. How about you? Yes. The God we serve wants to know. He, he already knows you. He wants you to know him. Yes. And you can know him today. You can know him in the part of your salvation. I got one more story I'll tell you real quick before I leave you today. There's this church, I believe it was in Europe. And it was a small building, but it had a great uh, uh, temple. It had a great, uh, what is it called? The steeple. Steeple, thank you. Help me out. It had a great steeple there. Artistic and beautiful designs. But the problem was that the people could not enjoy the beauty of the steeple because it was so high up. It's so detailed they couldn't see it. 
So what the rector did to solve that problem, he brought a mirror out. He put the mirror slanted and so just so they could see the ceiling, the reflection of what was too high for them to see, but they didn't have to have the next bent up to see in Joy of Beauty. And don't you know how God sits high? He sits so high, we can't even attain to what he who he is. But you know what he did? He sent an exact replica of who he is in Jesus Christ. So Jesus said this, when you see me, you see the Father. Yes. And now he wants to say this. He wants the word to say this. When the world sees you, they see a reflection of who God is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How many people see God because you come in the room? Mm -hmm. How many people know that you belong to him when you walk in the room? God, I need revival. Yes. Yes. Let it begin in me. Amen. 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 I declare unto you, I declare unto you, if you dare spend time getting to know your God, your life will be altered. Your view will be altered. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I need this. Yeah. I need this. God bless you. Those who in the sound of my voice, you, you hear me talking about knowing this God. You may have never met him for yourself. You may have never came to a place in your life where you asked the Lord to come into your life. To be a Savior and Lord. Don't give him his heart. He don't want you to give him his heart. He want you to give you give yourself to him. You don't have the power to give your heart. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Wanting to come in. You say Lord come into my heart. Mm -hmm. He'll make the necessary changes. Yeah. It's not what you give him. It's what he, does, he gives you. Salvation is not what you give him. Salvation is what he gives you. Yes. Amen. 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 So stop trying to be what you're not. Because God sees it. This is not a stage and a performance that when you leave the building, you also leave your religion. Mm. It's not a performance where I practice and uh, I have a, a methodology that makes people emotional and they feel like they've been preached to because they shouted. But you can shout and still not know God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's not what it's all about. I want to have the kind of God that when I come in his presence, I see him, I understand him better, and therefore my life has changed. Yes, yes, Lord. I thank God. <laughs> I'm under construction. Yeah. But I thank God I got a mighty good constructor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God I'm in his hands. He's moving, removing, replacing, and renewing. But after a while, I'm going to be all right, y'all. And after a while, you're going to be all right. You ask God to come into your heart to change your life. Ask him to show you who he is. Because nobody can show you. Nobody can lead you into a prayer that will show you, that will save you. You have to come to know him for yourself. Yes. Amen. And I challenge you today. If you're a child of God, I challenge you in your walk. Join me as I come to know the God that saved me. Mm -hmm. I challenge you today. If you're not a child of God, I challenge you to become his child simply by asking Jesus Christ to be your Savior and to be your Lord. Yeah. Go to Romans 10, 9 and 10 and read that. If you confess your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. But you read that. It's not just a profession of the mouth. It's a belief in the heart. And if you believe in the heart, God will make a change in your life. Not all at once, but I'm between the glories. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. From glory to to glory, even as by, not by me, but even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is doing that change in me. I thank God. I surrender to him. I don't have to change myself. I'm asking him to do a work in me I can never do in myself. That building, that you, when that building needs to be constructed, the wood and those stuff don't jump up and start doing stuff on their own. They have to be under skillful hands mm -hmm. to know what to do and how to do it. Now, I admit to God, I don't have those skillful hands, but I trust him even when I don't trust myself to be the right kind of person. I trust him to make me that right kind of person. Amen. God bless you. Let's Amen. have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you right now. With all you gave me, God, I tried to pour into your people. Not with formal fashion, but seeking to minister a word that can be transformed.
transformative in the lives of those who listen. I pray, God, that I know it's not by might nor by power, by your spirit. I pray by your spirit you would take that seed that has been planted. And you let the person that heard that seed, heard that word today, not rest contented until they rest in you. I pray you disturb some people's hearts and minds. They're sitting in churches for years and years and never been changed. Mean and nasty when they came in, mean and nasty now. Have not been transformed by your presence. I pray for that person. I challenge each one that if call yourself a child of God, let their hearts be challenged, oh God, by this message. Do yes, not be satisfied with the menu religion. Amen. Not be satisfied with the way to know how to bring it. Not piggyback with someone else's relationship. But they'll bring and have their own fire. Because they know you in the pardon of their sins. I thank you now, God. I commit these to your hands. And I pray you use this message to build up your kingdom. I ask it in Jesus' name. God, get the glory. God, get the glory. God, get the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. I pray this message has been an insulation of hope into your life. I pray this message will, trans will God will use it to transform you into what you want to be in God. And what God wants you to be. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen.